Do you ever have those days where you just don't know what to play? There's just so many options, it's hard to pick exactly what you want to play at that moment. This happens to me all the time, especially when I get so many great suggestions for games to cover on a regular basis, it can be hard to pick the next project. So I decided to, well, not decide and leave it up to chance. I recently asked you all to comment below some platinum suggestions and thought it'd be fun to chuck every one of those games into the picker wheel. That way I didn't have to arm and ah about what to play and instead whatever the wheel landed on that's what I would platinum. Next, I ended up getting 35 unique game suggestions. Big thank you to everyone who commented. This list had quite a lot of variety in terms of platinum difficulty and general playtime. I mean we had games with nice, short and straightforward Platinums like the Spyro and Sly Cooper games, all the way up to the rage inducing why am I doing this Platinums like Hollow Knight and I Am Bread. So needless to say I definitely had my favourites in this list and games I'd rather avoid. I mean seriously, I Am Bread, what Satan would suggest that? But as a whole I was more than okay with attempting to tackle whatever game the wheel landed on, however long and difficult that may be. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to leave the video a like, comment below some more platinum suggestions, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and let's spin that wheel to see what we get. But first, you know what you don't want to leave up to random chance? Your online security, which is where our sponsor for today's video, NordVPN, can help. We can't be raw dogging the internet anymore, okay? And with NordVPN, with a single click onto one of their over 5,500 servers around the globe, everything from your location to your precious data are safe. Whether you're gaming or simply browsing your favorite websites, NordVPN has you protected. But that's just a bonus in all honesty, because with the ability to hop around the world means censored or region specific content can be accessed without moving a step. Being in Australia, we have a notoriously bad ratings board, or at least we did for a long time, which means there's so many games that have been banned or censored that I've never been able to play. But with one click, I'm over in the States or the UK and can finally purchase and play games like Manhunt or Hotline Miami 2. Right now, NordVPN is having an exclusive discount only available through my channel, plus an extra subscription bonus on all two year plans at nordvpn.com forward slash Mayor Hair Bear. That link is on screen in the description and the pinned comment if you want to help support the channel and a great product. I've personally been using NordVPN for a couple of years now and it's just so easy to use and helps me feel a lot safer online. I seriously can't recommend it enough. Thank you to NordVPN for officially being the channel's first sponsorship and let's get back to the video. Sleeping Dogs is a game I've been meaning to revisit for a while now and honestly I was a little surprised to see it recommended. So shout out to Paul, Alejandro and Kratos for the suggestion. Now I will say that Sleeping Dogs is one of the easier titles on this list to platinum, scoring a 3 out of 10 on PSN profiles for difficulty. But it is a decent time sink of roughly 30 hours and open world platinums do usually involve their fair share of tedium so I think this is a pretty balanced experience to go for. But if you're unfamiliar with what Sleeping Dogs is, I'll give you a quick rundown for this video. The game follows our protagonist Wei Shen, an undercover cop who just recently returned to Hong Kong and is tasked with infiltrating the triad group known as the Sun On Yi. Sleeping Dogs is an open world GTA like with the twist being the focus on martial arts combat and the conflict of being a good police officer whilst also successfully keeping your triad cover, involving, well, not very police-like things. That's a very basic description, but for this video and not a retrospective, which I'm currently also working on, it's all you really need to know. So with everyone caught up, let's get this platinum. And yes, I'm playing this on the PS4 because you can't actually buy Sleeping Dogs on the PS5. You can play it on PS5 if you already own the game, but the last time I played a PS4 game not purchasable on PS5, it ran really poorly. Now step one is pretty self-explanatory. Beat the main game. 
This will net you the four mission based trophies. While along the way also unlocking a trophy for completing a police case, completing 10% of all missions, defeating five enemies with environmental hazards, completing all the different types of hacking minigames, performing an action hijack, and visiting each of the four areas once. That's all of the unmissable trophies you'll get just by beating the game. However, I did unlock quite a few more in this step just by keeping an eye out for the miscellaneous trophies along the way. So in this step, I also unlocked Strike Gold and Gold Rush for obtaining one and five gold stat awards. Long way, we don't have a lot of- oh, shit. We'll come back to these in the next step. Slight Silver for five silver stat awards defeating an enemy using a fish, safe driver for driving above 60 kilometers an hour for two minutes without hitting anything, sharpshooter for shooting out a police car's tires, kleptomaniac for hijacking five trucks and returning them, and gun nut for using 10 different guns to defeat enemies. Which as long as you pick up weapons as you see them, you should get. Again, you may get more or less during step 1, it just depends what you're looking out for and given there are 60 trophies we need to get here, I tried to knock out as many gameplay specific ones as I could when the opportunity arose. With the main game behind us and 10 hours in so far, the real grind was about to begin. For step 2, we needed to complete basically everything else in this game. I know. No biggie. We need to complete all police cases, finish first in every street race, finish all favours for the people of Hong Kong, complete all world events, complete all jobs, and find all the collectibles. This step alone took me just under 20 hours to complete. There is a lot to do here in Sleeping Dogs and most of it is good fun. Yes, it's a lot of repetition in some instances, such as mission design and general objectives, but the core foundation of the game is something I really Really enjoyed so it wasn't too bad and the world isn't enormous. It's no Assassin's Creed Odyssey where the prospect of just going from place to place is daunting. It feels like the perfect size for me at least. So I went around Hong Kong and I did everything. I did all of my police work. I helped out people in need. I went out on dates. I owned the street racing scene. I conquered the martial arts clubs. I did some bounty hunting. A lot of car thievery. And along the way I got really good at karaoke. Though the minigame could have been better. Scoring over 90 on all songs. I bet on some willy fights. I tried 10 different foods across Hong Kong, Fix you right up. My squid found 10 different melee weapons to beat up some people with, however unconventional they may be, got nice and dressed up, got me some more stat awards, and yes, found all the lock boxes, health shrines, and security cameras. For 20 hours of work, you'd think it'd be more of a tale, more grandiose, more difficult, but really it's not that exciting. Most of these objectives are marked on your map. You just drive around the city and complete them, and even with such a large trophy list, a lot of trophies are tied to one another. All of these trophies may have taken me the longest to obtain, but they are not difficult just time consuming. Honestly, Sleeping Dogs has one sort of challenging trophy. Not hair pulling levels of challenge, but it does require you to be consistently working towards it if you want to avoid an unnecessary level of grinding. That trophy is pure gold, which requires you to get 30 gold stat awards out of a possible 32 challenges. Now, this isn't challenging in itself, as just by doing the 100% objectives, you will naturally get quite a lot, 
but you do need to be constantly aware of this list because the combat related challenges will get harder and harder to pull off once you've got nothing else to rely on but seeing random triads in the street. These challenges make you play sleeping dogs very odd at times. Like for instance, one stat is for getting vaulting over object kills, which to get this I basically would drive up to the drug bust, park my car, and bait enemies into these attacks. Which ended up exposing some pretty poor AI, but I'll talk about that in my retrospective. Again, it's not really challenging if you're aware of the challenges throughout the whole playthrough. And you do have two challenges you can decide not to bother with, which I chose to avoid the gambling one, where you need to have positive winnings of 1 million dollars which is you know a luck based challenge which i wasn't having much luck with and disarming enemies just because it was a combat challenge i didn't find came naturally to me only having a bronze by the time i finished 100%ing the game but that still meant I was ninja attacking a ton of civilians, I was spamming certain attacks like the knee breaker, I was making sure I was using melee and guns enough in combat, I was throwing weapons, that sort of thing. If you optimize your chances, this really isn't too bad though, but it's one of the rarest trophies in the game for a reason. It's a lot of work, and while most can come naturally, those remaining few do require going out of your way to achieve. Just don't leave them until it's too late though, and you should be good. Anyway, with step 2 out of the way, I decided to leave the main game as I only had a few trophies left and make my way through Sleeping Dogs 2 DLCs. There's only 9 trophies between the two and it's the same sort of thing with their own twists. Nightmare in North Point has us battling demons, vampires and ghosts which honestly was a great breath of fresh air for me at this point in my journey. So I finished the main missions, completed all the side objectives, and found all the money shrines. I just needed to get five unique gold stat awards. <sighs> This is what I mean by learning what these challenges are before it's too late, because these were an absolute grind for me, or at least one was. Kill 200 Zhang Shi, which if you beat the game and all the side content, you may get close to 100. The ideal way to handle this challenge is just farm a portal side mission, and you can grind this out much easier. The way I had to do it was to drive around North Point and find these groups of maybe 4 or 5 Zhang Shi just in the street and get 100 more kills that way. You can't run them over either, it has to be hand to hand combat. I don't have to tell you, but the extra travel time and simply finding these spawn points was so damn tedious and had me contemplating just going back to the main game and getting the platinum. But I did persist, got my 5 gold stats eventually and moved on to Year of the Snake, which has Wei taking on a complete cop role. This DLC is a lot more repetitive and feels like it drags on a little too long, but trophy wise these are a cinch with just the 4 trophies, 2 of which are for simply beating the story, and the other 2 for completing all the secondary content, and finding all the evidence collectibles. The actual structure of this DLC I'm not a huge fan of, but again, not a review. So with the two DLCs done and dusted, it was time to get the last remaining trophies for Sleeping Dogs. I finally achieved the Pure Gold Trophy, which as I said is probably the biggest undertaking of this Platinum journey. Excellent. I went out and purchased every item of clothing in all vehicles, now you aged for remember who you're which friend? left me with one trophy remaining ultimate fighter for reaching level 10 in the triad tree. I know it seems like an easy trophy but the difference with the triad and all the other leveling trees is the experience is much easier to come by whereas the triads really only level up from the story missions. You need to mix up your attacks, counter, use your environment, basically be as bad as possible to get a 3 star mission rating and get more XP. I was at about 9.5 at the end of the main story which meant I needed to replay missions. Now fully decked out and with more combos in hand and try and up my score where possible. This took a few missions and some clothes that up my triad XP, but after I finally got to that coveted level 10, the trophy popped along with my 44th Platinum, and our journey with Sleeping Dogs was complete. 
So after 33 hours in total, what did I think of Sleeping Dogs Platinum? Is it worth going for yourself? I think so. Again, it's not a particularly difficult Platinum to go for, but you do have to bear in mind that you are tripling the length of the game, at least the main story, by doing so. Thankfully, I didn't start to feel the burnout until I started grinding out the remaining collectibles and cleaning up some gold stat awards. But that only amounted to about 3 or 4 hours out of a total 33, which isn't too shabby. It's not great, but it's more a mental challenge in tedium than actually difficult. So if you enjoy sleeping dogs especially enough to do most of the open world objectives, you're so deep into the platinum that you might as well try and achieve it, and for an open world title, it's not an insane time sink. Overall I had a great time revisiting the game and I'm really proud I could add this one to my growing platinum collection. Thank you all so much for watching the video, make sure if you did enjoy the video to leave it a like because it helps let me know that you enjoyed yourself. Comment below some more Platinum suggestions, I'd love to turn this style of video into a series. Shout out to the channel members Infamous Sir Hellfire, Featuring Gaziano, Christian Vilegag, Cloud Connection, Kranatoko, Crumb Sparky and Conker for that extra level of support, I truly do appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, go give my socials a follow if you fancy, at Mayor Hair Bear, and I'll catch you all in the next video.